Okay. What do you think of my keto-style pasta and keto-style meatballs? Are you ready to show them how to make it? Yes? Yes? Hey, hi, hi. <laughs> Enjoy the recipe and definitely post us and tag us if you feel that you are going to make it and you do make it and it comes out delicious. spaghetti squash I'm gonna use half since I'm just making for myself one lemon one egg some keto friendly tomato sauce and I'll point out the details on that further into the video some freshly cracked black pepper my little mixture which is just green onion cilantro parsley and MCT oil you're gonna need some garlic powder I'm using my three Mrs. Stash, like I always do, the Southwest Chipotle Garlic Curb and Original. You're also going to need some soy salt and some pink Himalayan sea salt. You'll need a frying pan that's nonstick to fry your meatballs in, and then another saucepan that you can use for you to make your sauce in. So without further ado, let's get right into it. What you're going to do is take your little bowl, you're going to cut your ground leaf packet open and just pour that into your bowl. You're then going to take your lemon, cut it in half, and you're going to squeeze the complete lemon onto your ground beef. Like so, so one half and your other half. Taking the seeds out. If the seeds fall in there, just pull them out because you obviously don't want seeds in your meatballs. So like that. Okay. And you're gonna go ahead and add your seasoning. So I'm gonna go in with the cracked black pepper first. And you can always get already grounded black pepper, but I just like to use the cracked black pepper just because it has more of a fresh, a freshness to it in my opinion. But if it's already grounded, it doesn't make it not keto friendly. You're gonna take your garlic powder. Okay. You're gonna take your Southwest mustache, and remember, mustache is salt free say that all the time so I love to cook with her for that flavoring. Take your garlic herb mustache and take your original mustache. Okay. Then you're going to take some sea salt, not that much, just a little sprinkle. I think Kyra woke up so I might have to go grab him. You're going to take your egg and just crack it in there. Take that shell out. Okay. I'm also going to put a little bit of soy sauce in there just for color and some taste. And then I'm going to add in some of my little mixture. Again, comment down below if you want me to do a video on how I made this. It lasts for quite some time now. I'm also going to take a little bit of MCT oil and just drizzle it in there. And so your meatball mixture should look like this now. And now comes the fun part. Make sure your hands are clean because you're going to go right in there. And just mix it all up. Everything 
you really want to make sure all your seasonings are evenly mixed in and distributed in so that all your meatballs have that really yummy flavor. The egg is really important when you're making beef meatballs because without the egg, it tends to be quite dry. So I noticed once I add an egg into my beef meatball mixture, it brings that kind of juiciness to the meatball once it's cooked. should look like this and now what you're going to do is roll them into little meatballs once you roll them well how you're going to roll them is take just a little bit like this much okay and all you're going to do is roll it in just a little circle like so and then place it off to the side and you're going to repeat that your entire half of ground beef now you can mix this with pork if you want to ground pork um, I just don't do it because my husband doesn't eat pork. You can also use ground chicken if you would like to, but I just like to use ground beef. You can mix it too. Like, I know this one lady who does half ground beef and half pork, and it just tastes so amazing. So you can definitely do that as well with your meatballs. But yeah, you're just going to keep... And I'll show you how much I just scoop up from it, just like that much. And then I just take it and just roll them, like so, into little balls. And pop them on my board aside. So once that's done, you will get your pan heated with oil. The oil you're going to use to fry the meatballs in is half olive oil so i would say one teaspoon olive oil one teaspoon mct oil okay or better yet one table olive oil and one table mct oil alternatively you can make your meatballs in the air fryer i do do that quite a bit i'm just lazy to get it out right now but you can definitely do that just cook it on medium heat preheat your air fryer for like five to ten minutes and then you can throw them in there like I said I just didn't want to go grab my air fryer so I'm just gonna do it in my frying pan and it's still keto that's the good thing with keto you can fry your stuff up as long as you're frying it in the correct oil you don't want to fry it in any oil that has a lot of non-keto stuff if you watch the YouTube documentary actually called the magic pill it goes into all the bad types of oil, like canola oil and just oils that you want to stay away from. Not because of gaining weight, but just that those oils are not good for your immune system, especially if you're diabetic. I'm not a doctor, right? I'm not certified to be giving out any medical type of information, but I'm just letting you know with my three years of doing keto and why I stuck to it, it's not for the weight loss. It's just for the fact that it keeps your immune system quite healthy. Um, I have three friends who are nurses, RNs, and two of the three of them are actually, they do the same thing I do. They live a ketogenic lifestyle and so do their kids as well. So like I said, keto lifestyle, it's nothing negative. A lot of people think it has to do with cooking with a lot of heavy oils and grease, but actually, it's not just that. You need to really do your research and see what keto, what the ketogenic lifestyle is all about. It's far from just a regular diet to make you lose weight. That's not what it is. And I get so frustrated when I hear people say that. Um, just do your homework. So I'm gonna keep rolling up my meatballs and then I will show you how to put them in your frying pan. all that seasoning in there, you can definitely see it. So we're gonna go ahead and get our frying pan heated up. So like I said, you're gonna just put about one teaspoon or tablespoon of MCT oil in there, okay? And then you're gonna put one teaspoon of, or tablespoon of olive oil in there. Turn your stove on. 
high and let it get heated. While that's getting heated, we're gonna move on to our sweet potato, um, our spaghetti squash, similar family. You are going to just cut your spaghetti squash in half like I did, I already had an extra half in the fridge. And you're going to put it in a pot of hot water to boil on high for about five, well, 10 to 15 minutes, check it. It might need a bit longer, but you can see when it starts to get soft because it actually changes colors. It doesn't stay this white. Spaghetti squash is a really good alternative to just eating pasta, especially if you're on a low carb lifestyle or a ketogenic lifestyle, just because you really want to stay away from those pointless carbs. And pasta, in my opinion, is definitely a pointless carb. Um, so I always, always go with the spaghetti squash when eating any type or making any type of pasta dish. And most restaurants do have this option now, so be sure to ask them if they have a spaghetti squash alternative if you go and order a dish that has to do with pasta. So I'm going to get my pot of water and put this to boil in there on high. you would with pasta and then I'm just going to put my sweet potato in there facing downwards okay my meatball oil is hot so I'm gonna go ahead and add my meatballs in And just a little bit at a time. You don't want to overcrowd your pot um, just because then it won't cook as evenly as you want it to. I'm going to do a close-up to show you how that looks like. So you can see I have about, I would say, 8 to 10 meatballs in there, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10 to 12 meatballs in there, um, and they're going. And I have my spaghetti squash facing flesh downwards, okay? Um, so you're going to make that cook, like I said, for about 10 to 15 minutes. And you're going to turn these in a quick bit because you don't want them to cook dry 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 because you're going to transfer it to here with the sauce while those are both cooking we'll move on to the sauce just so i can show you what pasta sauce to use you can make pasta sauce from scratch i just don't really have the time to do that so i like to buy already made and there are keto options like i told you don't always just look at the nutrition facts because as you can see it says six grams of carbs and four grams of sugars so you might say oh i can't use that for keto well if you read the ingredients you'll see that you can because the ingredients is just italian whole peeled tomatoes olive oil onions basil salt garlic black pepper and oregano so that shows you there actually is no sugar in there it's just natural sugar that comes from the tomato okay um again very keto friendly you know if a sauce is keto friendly if you can read the label and read all the ingredients that are in the sauce most tomato sauces you can't do that i can get the one that my husband uses which is this one here and you can see the difference in the ingredients already calcium chloride sugar like there it's just a no right and you can see there's four grams of added sugar, 14 grams of carbs. This sauce is just not a keto friendly sauce. So you wanna stay away from that and pick something up like this that has ingredients that you can easily read and you know what's going into your body. You can find this at Food Lion or Whole Foods. No Frills has, I'm pretty sure, for my Canadian viewers, sauces that have natural ingredients as well. Just read the label. So. I'm going to go ahead and give my meatballs a turn.
I'm gonna turn them and then I'll show you how they look like. I'm gonna turn them on one side and that's how it looks like. I'm gonna let it cook up a bit more and then I'm gonna transfer them from this pot to this pot over here, which is going to contain the tomato sauce that I was just showing you guys. I've gone ahead and trans um, poured my sauce into the saucepan. And I also added the exact same seasonings that I used to season the meatball into the sauce, just so that once I add all the meatballs in, I can stir that up and it's gonna taste really, really yummy. It'll have the exact same flavor hints and it will really enhance the sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead actually and start to transfer my meatballs out. So all I'll do is just take them like so and put them into the frying pan. And you notice I haven't mixed the seasonings or anything yet. My saucepan is not on. The stove for that is off. And I did that deliberately. So now I'm going to add new meatballs to that oil. Okay, there. And the oil has a lot of bubbles, you'll notice. And I said this last time I used MCT oil. When you mix it with any type of other oil, it does create a lot of bubbles. I think it's just a little minor chemical reaction that happens um, with both oils coming together. could get a bigger um, frying pan to do this, but like I said, I'm a bit lazy today, so I'm going to work with what I got right now. <laughs> so I'm going to make those cook up, and again, I'm not going to turn mix these all in. I'm going to leave them as is, and I'll mix it all up once everything is poured, once all the meatballs are made and added to the sauce mixer. going to turn on the saucepan that has the meatballs in it the saucepan. And we're going to go ahead and now mix it all up. All stirred up with the meatballs in there. What I'm going to do now is just leave it and let it sit so that it can start to simmer. Okay? Now, we're going to go over to our spaghetti squash. You'll notice I have some actual pasta floating around in there too. Just because I don't believe in putting your spouse on a lifestyle that they don't want to be on. So I always make my husband a alternative whenever I make my keto meals. Sometimes he'll eat them like if it's keto chicken wings or something. But for the most part, I like to do make him what he likes to eat. So my squash is definitely ready. My pasta looks like it can stay for a little bit longer and it doesn't hurt spaghetti squash to stay for a bit longer. So I'm just gonna leave it in for a little while longer, about a minute more, and then take it out. You can see that this is coming to a simmer. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a stir. And you can see all those seasonings in there. It looks really, really yummy. And I'll show you it simmering. See that? So it is starting to simmer. So we're only going to leave it for two minutes to a simmer and then turn it off. Okay? And we'll cover it when it's off 
so that the meatballs can continue to cover it, trapping all the heat in there so that even if the stove is off, it's still cooking up, thickening up, and coming nice and delicious. You can see that close up, looks really good. Okay. So I'm going to cover it like so and turn it off. Right, so I went ahead and put my coriander in the sink, okay, or colander, whatever you call it, the strainer thingy for the pasta. I'm going to turn the water on full, just so when I pour the pasta in there, it can have cool water washing it out. I like to wash my pasta, um, just cause I find if you don't wash pasta, it has a lot of starch that came from the package that is left on your pasta. So it tasted really starchy and disgusting when you don't wash it off after cooking it. So just try it. Try washing your pasta after cooking it before eating it with your meat sauce. I'm telling you, it will change the flavoring. It will change your life. Wash your pasta. Now my spaghetti squash is also gonna go underneath the cold water. Not to wash it, but just more so to cool it down so that I'm able to kind of like scrape it so that the spaghetti can come out and you're going to see what I mean by that, okay? So I got it and I'm going to start to strain it very carefully. Be very careful because you don't want that spaghetti squash to come out and give you a big splash. So it came out first. I'm going to add my husband's pasta next. Every time I touch it, I'm making sure I run it underwater. I'm gonna try to pick it up. It's very soft, which is great. Very hot. And I'm going to take this squash and put it into, well, I'll leave it in the sink for now. Take my husband's pasta and keep washing all that starch off of it. And again, try to wash your pasta. Don't knock it till you try it. You'll be like, oh my gosh, Simone, that tastes so much more better. It doesn't have that starch to it. Some people probably already wash it, but if you don't, try to wash it. We got that all washed. Give it a good strain. Okay, and I'm going to put it back into the pot, and I'm not done with it yet. I'll show you what I'm doing with it in a minute, but I'm just going to leave it off to the side in the pot. Now I'm going to go back to my spaghetti squash, run it under a bit of cold water. I'm going to take a fork. And you're going to see how cool this is if you don't know already how it looks like pasta. 
breaking in half as you can see, it's very soft, which is fine, just rip it apart like so. And here to run it under cold water because it's very hot. And watch how your pasta is created. You literally take your fork. I wanna show you close up how that looks like. And it looks like little, kind of like angel hair pasta. Pretty cool, eh? So you're just gonna scrape it into your strainer. Okay. It gets really hot, so keep that cold water on so you don't burn yourself. If it breaks apart, that's okay. Just keep scraping it into your strainer. Okay. So you get to the very bottom. And just in. Okay. Scraping it, scraping it. Give it a quick toss. If you don't haven't noticed already, I am not afraid of playing in my meals when preparing them. I like to give them a, like, a lot of love, a lot of yelp when making them. So I'm gonna show you close up how the spaghetti squash looks like. And literally looks like little pasta. I'm gonna strain it and then show you how that looks like. Keep straining it. Take all the water out. Okay. All of that water, you want to take it out. And I'll show you how that looks like. So you see, it looks like pasta. Pretty cool, eh? But really, it's just spaghetti squash. Way better than wasting your carbs for the day on pasta. So this is my pasta. Okay, again, close up. Cool, eh? You see some of my husband's in there, but yeah. Pretty neat. Literally like pasta. And then you have my husband's pasta, which we're now going to season. All I'm going to do is take my spoon that I was mixing my sauce with. And I'm literally just going to mix his pasta up, okay? Just leave it on there for about, I would say, 5-10 minutes, no longer. And then I'll plate his and plate mine and show you how it looks like. Have it, your keto, low-carb, spaghetti, and meatballs. So that is my plate. And that is my husband's plate with pasta. Don't forget to like and subscribe and enjoy. Comment down below how this tasted when you made it. I'm ready to eat and break my fast and I hope you are too. Until next time, see you. Bye.